Hello everyone, welcome to my live stream. Today, since I'm still working on my secret Christmas present project, I'm just going to do something totally different for my stream. I am going to draw a chibi Japanese hornet. Um, one of my clients on Facebook recently made a post and I, I think it was about like scary bugs and then I said something like even though bugs scare me I still think they're cool and sometimes cute and, you know something like that and he was like yeah it's generally the same for me too except for this and then he posts a picture of Japanese Hornet but um, I don't know if I've ever seen one before that but it has such big eyes that I was like oh I just want to turn it into a chibi <laughs> so that instead of being scary it'll be cute because it already has the really super big eyeballs, although it doesn't have eyeballs, it has, you know, probably a compound eye like most insects. So I've got, I just did a Google search in the images. Of course, I've got some gross results of people being stung by <laughs> this huge, huge, huge hornet. But all I really want to see is what the bug looks like. So, I'm scrolling through here. I don't want to use one particular image just because I didn't see any that looked really good. I think what I want to do is just make up my own thing that that at least looks like the correct animal. But, I guess first I need to find a good picture of the head. I there are some I it's just the head, but I can't really see the body very well. Oh, is this one? Oh, this one is so cute. It looks so curious, this picture. <laughs> oh, this one is cool. I don't know about the lighting though. I thought it would be easier to pick <laughs> what I wanted. Hmm. <laughs> Sometimes the pictures that uh, their antenna get in front of their eyes and make it look like they're they have like a sad expression or something. Kind of have an idea. Okay. I'm just going to start by sketching the idea of what I want the chibi to look like overall. So the wings are as long as the rest of the body, starting from, I don't know what you call that, the thorax, the middle segment. And it goes all the way, so the wings are pretty long. So I need to, if I'm going to have the wings out, I probably need to do it this way. Since it's a chibi, it's going to have, as usual, the head much bigger than normal. Although, its head is already pretty big just because it's a bug. But I want it to have a sort of tilted, I want it to be tilted a little bit so it looks kind of cute and curious. And then, so its head's going to be this big. So, if I'm using the word correctly... Wait, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> I'm just gonna do a quick search and see if thorax is the correct word. Thorax part of the body of a mammal between the neck and the abdomen. Yes. Wonderful. I think that is a thorax breastplate curious corslet between the neck and the end. Yep, that must be it. Yay! I remembered on my own. <laughs> okay, I know that some bugs have something else. Bugs. By bugs I mean just, you know, insects. But anyway, I, it wouldn't be visible because the head's gonna be so big that from this angle. So I just need to draw the abdomen part. 
And I wanted it to curve a little bit so it seems cuter. I mean, it's already pretty curved, so it's already kind of cute. <laughs> I'm sure people who've been stung by this beast don't think it's cute, but luckily for me, that's never happened. And then it's got its wings. Got that picture of the wings. Let me click this and make it bigger. Oh, it's still so small. Weird Wednesdays. Killer hornets of death. <laughs> huh. Japanese giant hornet. The stuff of nightmares, that's what my, my client said. <laughs> I think they're really cool. So the wings come out of the thorax, so they need to come out from behind the head. They're actually very pretty wings. They're very lovely. So they come down, it curves a little bit, then this one comes down and curves inwards like that. And of course it needs a matching one on the other side. It'll be a little shorter because the thorax is probably around here, so the start point is closer in. There's more of this wing being hidden. That beeping singing is my washing machine, which is right outside my door. My laundry is done. Okay, so I've got the body pretty much. Got the wings. Now I need to go to a picture that shows the head pretty good. Japanese hornet head. I've got some really close up ones. I need one not quite so close. Ah, this one looks so angry. <laughs> Where's that one that was looking cuter? Because its antenna were hanging down. It's so interesting how they have such different colors on their faces. Some of them are really orange. The other ones are yellow and it fades into orange. Now this one's cute. I will look at this one. Oh, this is from Wikimedia Commons. Oh yeah. This is this is pretty cute looking. Okay. So the head is not a circle, it's more like a teardrop shape, although its little mandibles seem to open based on all these pictures I have looked at so far. And the top of the head is relatively flat. It's got a little curve, but it's not like a perfect circle. And it curves pretty abruptly toward the edges. Yeah, that's looking pretty cute. Now, its eyes are already gigantic, but in order to make it really, really chibi, I'm going to make them even bigger. But I guess first, this one's mandibles right here is really dark. It's kind of hard for me to see. So I am peering over 
It's kind of like teeth, I think. It comes down a little bit and then it's got interlocking like teeth. It seems. Meep moop, meep moop. Meep moop. One, two, three. Seem to just have three. And one seems to come down. So, let me fix this. One comes down farther than the other. Maybe I need to do this one. recently been reading a lot of kids books because I've been reading my Christmas book collection and it sort of reminded me that I don't have to I don't have to draw everything exactly anatomically and uh, like a uh, naturalistically correct but I just enjoy doing that so I'm gonna keep doing it. <laughs> I really like making my chibi animals as realistic as possible while still messing with the proportions and making it look anime inspired. Now it's got this cool little area right, right in the middle. And this picture makes it look like a orange rind. It's got a lot of texture on it. So to start, I'm just going to draw the really rough shape, and then I'll add the details. It's kind of like a weird hexagon. And then, the eyes don't come exactly out of it. There's another... The whole face is so interesting. It looks like a puzzle put together. Like here's a mandible, mandible, here's a spot in the front, the two cheeks, and then there's these little lines here, and then the eyes pop in. And of course there's the top of the head. Wow, the eyes really go way up there too. They are not just perfect round. They, they go up like this, and then come out and over, and it's they are huge. So for my chibi, I'm going to make them extra big. That's what I always do for all chibis. Give them extra big, extra cute. Round stuff and make the proportions baby-like. That's the key. So with human babies, they have huge heads and huge eyes. That's why we like cute things that have those proportions. Okay, other eye comes down like this. And turns out just like that one. Gotta try to make these similar. Oh, it already looks cute. Sides look like beans now that I'm drawing like this. With no the extra stuff. <laughs> no antennas yet. If you're hearing a rattling, it's my markers. I put them next to me so they're ready to go. I'm ready to start coloring. I'm gonna be coloring with markers and colored pencils. As usual with my traditional media. Chibis. You know what? It's a good idea. Get this. Stop swiping it with my hand. <laughs> okay, now where am I at? How's this looking? These aren't quite the same. Though, since the head is turned, they don't necessarily have to be 
exact. Let's see. There's something about this is not quite right. How about that? Oh, I don't have too long. So I'm not going to spend too much more time perfecting this. I've still got other details to draw. like a little curve and then a little curve in, a little curve out, a little curve in. And this is a big curve and this is a big curve. Now mandibles. You connect like this and then come upwards and then right here curve downwards. So, same thing on this side. Up, but not quite touching. There's this black line in between all of it. I don't know what it is, but the rest of this particular hornet is orange. Quite orange. It really looks like an orange, like the fruit. Okay. Now, its eyes have a line that come down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, this part is where it's a little bit more complicated. So this is here, but then this is where its antenna start to sprout, I guess you could say, right out of this nose part. I call it a nose, I'm sure it's not a nose, but the nose is what I have, so that's what I will call it. I'm not an entomologist. And then these are orange, and then they become black, at least on this particular specimen. These parts are orange, but the rest of the antenna are black. And there's this little line across its forehead. And then it's got three little dots right here. Right in between its eyes. I bet those have some sort of function. Whether we humans know what that is or not. Probably a different story. It's got two little black marks here that make it look like nostrils, but they're not holes, it's just black markings. Okay, I think about the whole bottom of the face. Figured out. Oh. Oh, that's alright. Okay. This is actually not quite right. There's a a black line here and then a black line here but I'll just leave it because I don't have all day <laughs> I gotta get back to working on my Christmas presents I had a little shock yesterday when it was like oh only five days left till Christmas oh no didn't realize it was already here it's so close Already. Now it's got this picture. Oh, what is this? It's got these little 
little small things hanging down from here, but I can't tell if it comes off the head or off the abdomen, and that's important because if it comes off the head, I should include it, but if it comes off the abdomen, I, I mean the uh, thorax, I shouldn't because it would be covered. There's another picture I can see what that is. Hmm, I can't see them in this picture. This one is totally different. The way it's colored, it has red on its mandibles. And its antenna are red. <laughs> this person has a string wrapped around one like it's their pet. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I won't bother with that because I cannot see those things in any of these other ones. Any of these other pictures. So it's probably not a big deal if I leave them out. Ooh. Oh, that's different. European. Oh, wait. Yay! I just found a picture. I hope it gets bigger. Yes! Shows how its legs work. That's what I needed. I zoom in. Zoom. Yes! Awesome! Let's see. Scroll. I need to see. All the other ones, all the other pictures, the legs are so dark I couldn't really see see them. Now I can. So the thorax right here is so probably its little leg would come out like this and it's holding it in this picture exactly like I want it to be. Kind of cute and like this. <laughs> it's actually it's actually really cute like the little leg segment tapers out like a little pair of bell bottoms <laughs> so if it's curving back here i don't see very much of it actually it's got these little grippers on the bottom not toes exactly but just these rows of, of things and then it's got one or two i think one little looks like one little claw One little tiny claw. Meep. There it goes. <sighs> Probably won't be able to see the other leg because it's covered by the giant head. But since it's an insect, it has six legs. This picture actually gets a bit confusing in the middle here. I can't tell what the second leg is doing. Uh, okay, I think it's bending outwards, so I'll just try to do that. They all come from the thorax, though. None of them come from the abdomen. So this one I'll draw. Whew, it's hard to tell where I'm looking. Okay, curves up just a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. It tapers back like that. It's got a little joint. And here's the next piece. Does it taper out? I think it's tapering out like bell bottoms too. This piece. It's really hard to tell because I'm looking at it from the side, but I'm trying to draw it to match my pose here. This one seems like it has a little, little spike coming out right here. What the heck? Okay. Well, I will just do my best <laughs> with this part. Oh. 
like the opposite leg has some little claws on the end too. It seems like the middle leg has two claws on it. Although this seems to be a dead specimen, like, you know, like one that's in, displayed in a case. It's all dry and gross looking, so <laughs> maybe it actually has more claws that they've fallen off. Well, I'll just draw one, because I'm kind of drawing it from the side anyway. Okay. And then the back legs kind of, they're super long and they go way past the abdomen, so... The abdomen being this part. Come up. It's got a really similar. It looks like a little, little chicken leg. <laughs> this part. Comes up and over. There's not as obvious of a joint here. It just sort of bends into the back part. Like it's growing out and then it tapers like bell bottoms again. And it does have more little spikes on it. There, yeah, and then huh, maybe the top one did too. But you can't really see it from the side. So confusing. <laughs> You got a picture where it shows the legs really well, but it's still really confusing to look at. Okay, I'll just draw one spike here. Just, it doesn't have to be perfect. Still looks like it's drawn from nature. Now these legs get super long. Whee! Comes straight down, comes up a little bit, and goes straight down. And curves down to one little tiny claw. Now, to draw this part, it has these little ridges here. Don't come all the way down the leg, so I'll just do one more. Since it's coming like this, I wonder if I should draw the other leg and make it visible, or... Just leave it because it's getting kind of jumbled in here. Plus, I don't, I don't really like how this one is angled. I want it to seem like it runs more alongside the abdomen. This way it looks like it's just sticking out. How to get that look. And a little claw, drop a little claw again. Hmm, I don't know if I made it any better. <laughs> it looks almost the same. I do that. I do uh, like that a little better, though. I like that more than I did. Just thinking about this other leg, whether I should draw it. Hmm. 
realistically it probably would be visible but for the sake of this drawing I think it's better to leave it out that way it's so for instance I'm looking at this photograph and it's super confusing trying to figure out which leg is which which side of the body it's on you know whether it's the first second or third leg what each of them is doing so it's a lot less confusing having only the legs from one side so yeah I'm going to stick with just these legs I won't draw the others just pretend that they're hidden behind the rest of the the head and stuff but I'm still not done I need to draw some more details on the wings Got this more hard looking bit on the top and of course they've got that you know lace wing kind of effect I'm just gonna make it up a little bit because I'm taking a lot of time trying to figure out what things look like I don't want to spend too much time doing that Okay, I need a different, I need a different picture. Oh, that one doesn't show the wings. Oh, here's sort of a picture. All desiccated and stuff, but... Let's take a look. This. Oh, it's from Pinterest. I hate Pinterest because it always, it won't show you anything unless you log in and have an account. Nope, nope, nope. There's got to be a picture that shows. So dark. Dang it. Oh, there we go. Please don't be on Pinterest. Ooh, that's kind of gross. It's a dead one for sale on eBay. <laughs> Whew. Yeah, I thought I'd just, <laughs> I'd just wing it. I just wing it on the wings, but it just wasn't satisfying. And now I think I understand why, because it needs to all branch out from the middle part. Oh, and there's a little smaller wing that I neglected because I couldn't see it in the other pictures. There. It has its own little dark thing. Yeah, they all 
else would branch out from one point. Already looking better. That's why I always use reference images. Because I can tell in my own drawings when it doesn't look right, but I can't tell why it doesn't look right until I do the proper research. So much better. Just looks so much better. Next, I need to. Oh, yeah, I never finished the antenna yet. Still missing those. I'm going to go back to that other picture of its close up on its face. And this one is already in the real picture. The picture of the real hornet is already curved pretty dramatically, but I'm going to really emphasize that curve to up the cuteness factor. Plus, having this really arched look like this gives it a more innocent expression because you can sort of read these antenna as eyebrows. I mean, I was already doing it just looking at the photographs. On purpose, I'm going to make this one a bit short because I don't want it to start interacting with these legs. The legs are already so complicated. I think this one I'm going to shorten up too so I can curve it even more. These have little ridges in them. I'm going to draw little lines. So I remember about that. I did one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. do have two claws on each foot. I'm gonna give it at least two on that one. This one you might not be able to see because it'd be covered by its own foreleg. Okay, anything else I'm missing? I guess there are these little fuzzy hairs all over it, but I rather than inking those, I think it'd be a better idea to just use colored pencil to add that detail. So I think I'm done with the, the pencil part of this. Now, I'm going to ink. 
So I didn't get my ink pouch. Hold on just a second. Gonna use my Ooh. and I'll use this. I'll just ink the whole thing with this, that'll make it faster. My favorite little brush pen. these remembering about these little ridges. Mandibles. Apparently it hurts when you get bit by these. So that's the one thing I'm going to make a little sharp looking. These mandibles. Everything else I've made extra round on purpose. is nice and smooth and round. Bugs are actually fairly prime candidates for cheapification. They're already really close to the, the anatomical proportions. Okay, legs. Little legs. Even though I think bugs are 
lovely and fascinating. They, they still startle me. <laughs> Whenever one like flies at my face or <laughs> I startle one and it comes out of nowhere in my in my point of view. Still let out a little scream. <laughs> I don't like saying I'm scared of them because I'm not scared of them exactly. It's just being startled by them, not wanting to be attacked by them if I happen to disturb like a nest or something. But it's not scared like, you know, I see a picture and I'm like, oh, not like that. <laughs> I guess I like to think of it as a more natural way of being scared of them, just the way any other animal would be, because they can tell from all the little natural signs that they're not to be messed with. The vibrant pattern on most bugs like these are is one of the natural signs of its um, what's the word <laughs> prowess, <laughs> its capabilities. That stark black and bright yellow or orange color. That's why those poisonous frogs are the same deal. They have black spots and a bright, you know, blue or green or red. That stark contrast just naturally reads as caution. And that's why we have our human signs, like, you know, road signs, caution signs are black on yellow, white on red, really big contrast. Okay, I think the only thing I'm missing is I never picked a pattern for the abdomen. I guess I'll just use this one as an example. It doesn't have to be too precise, but I think I will use a pencil to sketch it in first. This one has one, two, three, four, five black stripes. One, two. Oh, and the orange stripe gets lost on the end right there. Okay. So I'll just do it like this. And this is a great way to give a 3D look because these stripes can let you do a curved line, which makes it look 3D. This is black and this is black. Oh, it'd be better if it was orange. Oh, no, no choice. Just make the legs a little more orange so it'll stand out, I guess. And one more. There. That's good enough. These aren't perfectly straight, actually. They're kind of wobbly, so I'm going to ink them in wobbly to get an organic look for these stripes. There. That was easy enough. Anything else I missed? Got the wings. Abdomen. The legs, antenna, eyes. I think I got everything. Now, time to erase. Start as usual on the white part to 
clean up any smudges from my own hand and also give the ink maximum amount of time to dry. I'm only doing it on time. Alright, if I can color this in an hour, then I'll be spot on. We'll see. The coloring might be simple or it might be deceptively hard. At least it hasn't, doesn't have too many colors. It's all within a red to yellow range, plus the dark colors for the black. Holding the paper down tightly so that I don't, you know, squish it up with my erasing. I still sometimes do that. After all these years, I still sometimes manage to do it. But I haven't completely ruined a piece like I have in the past where I get like a huge crease down the middle. I haven't done that in a long time, so at least that's good. I think that's probably good. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll save signing it for last. Sometimes I like to sign it before I do the coloring. Oh, got a stretch because signing it on top of whatever I use to color doesn't work out, but I'll just sign it on the white part so it'll be okay. I want to do a little bit extra inking. I think I do. Lines thicker on the bottom. Give it some more weight. I would like to do a little black outline around the whole drawing. Gotta keep it looking delicate though. Here's a good place for some more dark because 
It'll help the leg stand out against the body here. All right, and underneath the antenna, I'll add a little more. Graphic one. Uh huh. outline I like to do just to make the whole character I guess you could say stand out against the background since I'm just doing a plain white background
All right, that's probably good enough to go. To go to the next step. Let's see. I should probably start with a lighter color. Zoom out of this. Orange, this one's antenna up orange. This one's antenna up black. Hmm. Oh wow, in this picture I can see it's got like dark brown eyes with black spots. Okay, I'll start with a yellow. Got my little swatch book here. <clears throat> Maybe this yellow ochre would be a good, this is yellow red, which is actually perfect because it's the range of color. Yeah, let's start with this. Yeah, I should even start as light as this cream color. Yellow red 21. Now, almost the whole head is this color. Be extra careful trying not to drag the color from the lines. That's so easy to do. These areas I'm just going to tap instead of actually drag the marker tip across the paper. And by tapping, there's less chance of smudging. Still pulling a little bit of ink, but minimal damage, <laughs> so that's good. It might get covered up in the end by the darker colors, so I'm not too worried. I just don't want to get what I've done in the past, and it's just a big streak of dark through an area that really shouldn't have it. Mostly tapping for this whole thing. Tap, 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 tap. And just like with watercolor, it's best if you start with the lightest color when you're using marker and then work to the darkest color.
think it will make the antenna a lighter color rather than darker. Because this one will get totally lost in the eye, which is going to be mostly dark and on the stripes. Make it a lighter color so it'll stand out against those things. are actually they're kind of yellow too but they're an even lighter I guess we'll just go ahead and make them this color smeared a whole bunch of ink. I think it's in the wing and I was doing it the direction of the lines for the wing so you can't, can't tell too much. <laughs> Ooh. And this spot right here. There. Okay, done with this color. So I'm done with this brush. Next, I should go to next. Now, I wonder if I should do all three of these or just skip to the yellow red 24 because eventually the page can't take any more marker and it just starts sitting on top of each other and it won't blend and it's really easy to smear. I do need to go to a pretty deep red color in some areas, so I guess I'll just go to the yellow red 24. Pale sepia. Though I always want to pronounce it sepia. Alright, where is it darker? The legs. The legs are darker. At least in this one. What does some of the other ones look like? Yeah, this one's legs are darker. Yep, they pretty much all have dark legs. This part of the wing is definitely darker. I 
and all the little lines that make up the lacy part as well. starting to do a little bit of shading so let's see this one's mandibles are super dark but it might just be because it's the dead one <laughs> This one looks like it's alive. So I'll use this one at least for the face. And make sure to shade to give it the shiny look that it has all of its its exoskeleton it's really nice and has a pretty sheen so I want to show that with the shading out the colors that I've used so far so that I don't have to try hard to remember what I was using if I need to go back to it. <clears throat> so this really is this picture of, of one of these is colored like an orange like the fruit. I wonder if maybe some the earth tones, I think they're in the back. Okay, when I get really, really dark, I'll go to this section of the earth tones. Now yeah, though, stick with the orange, but should I go? Let's see what I've got. Hmm. 
jumping from that to, to that or this one. I like the idea of making it more vibrant. So I'm gonna just try out this yellow red 16. Hopefully it works out. Hopefully it's not too too wildly colorful, but if it is, I can always tone it down a little bit later with some other colors. I'm hoping that by putting that on top of these more dull colors in the first place, it'll get toned down just from that. Doing little dots, because like I said, it looks like an orange. It has the little dots on it, the, the indentations like an orange has. So far so good, I think. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Turn the shading a little bit. All right, next. Just gonna jump into E19 Redwood. There's not very much on this on its face that'll be this color. Just a few little areas. to the legs. Okay. 
<laughs> I like this thing. It's sort of turning out cuter and cuter. And I started thinking about drawing this bug, which was actually a day or two ago. It was another one of those rare instances when I realized what people mean when they talk about artists showing the world what they see. Because usually I, I just feel like what I see isn't any different <laughs> than what anybody else sees. But then stuff like this reminds me that sometimes I do, I just interpret or perceive things a little differently than other people. It's like other people think this is a scary, scary monster, but I think it's really cool and it's actually kind of cute with its little eyes and stuff. I mean, little huge eyes. <laughs> and I felt the same way about stuff like how colorful something is when I try to do it exactly true to life. And I'm like, wow, it's actually so dull. But when I look at it, it just looks so much vibrant. So much more vibrant. Okay, I'm gonna go to E29 Burnt Umber. E twenty nine, E twenty nine. I'm really liking this. <laughs> it's looking really cute. Okay, I do want to do something. Put some more spots here. Put this darker color. There. Okay, satisfied. Now mandibles are quite dark. It's probably going to go darker than this. But I'm going to start here. This spot is super dark. So the area in between face segments. Little dark spots on its head, top of its wings. I guess I should do a little orange. I kind of forgot about the antenna, I think. I do very much orange on them. Gotta remember that I'm doing the antenna different than this reference image. I have three images up, and they all have slightly different coloring. I'm doing this one, I'm using this one for the face, but I'm doing the antenna different type of color. Alrighty. Where else needs the dark legs? The legs is tends to be the darkest near the joints. No idea why that is, but well, the claws seem to be black pretty much.
All right, one more level of dark because it's so dark it's pretty much black. So I might even go for a warm black color. A warm gray. Or I do have these two different kinds of blacks. Hmm. True black or warm gray. I prefer the warm gray. W10. Super, 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 super dark. I haven't done the eyes yet, but I'm thinking about them. I have not forgotten. I have not forgotten about the eyes. I keep hearing a snapping noise in here. I don't know what the heck it is. <laughs> Just a little small click. one of these blend a little bit. I found that using the lightest color that you colored with to blend rather than using the plain old blending marker tends to work better. Plain old blending marker I've found tends to suck the color away. And that's not what I want. I just want the color to be blended, not taken away. Okay, now the eyes, and I've noticed they've got brown in them, they're not just black. Let's see if I can zoom this picture in. I'm going to zoom in a little more than that. Ooh. There. Yeah, it's quite dark. You almost can't tell the difference. I'm just going to start with this super dark color and I will do these stripes with it too. The eyes and the stripes. Let's 
start with a super dark brown. to the bigger end for that bigger eye section. I don't want there to be any streaks, so I gotta fill in as much as I can, as fast as I can before it dries. Of course, since I'm going over it again with the darker color, it's not that big of a deal, but really starting to look like itself now. Oh, I'm really happy. <laughs> it looks cute. Okay, so it's actually the dark, the darker color that makes up the spots. It's not brown spots, it's black spots. And they seem to follow the curve of the eye and be in a little bit of a, a crossways pattern. So just try to freehand imitate that. I don't have any sketch to help me. Actually, I can only see it on the side where the light is coming from. I've made it so the light's coming from this side. So I'm actually going to end up filling in this whole side here. Let's do these little circles again. Rather than just totally filling it in, I'm just doing some hatching. It'll be a little more interesting to look at. Oh, wee, yeah, that's how you know the marker is getting thick. It's coming out onto the table. I better do these 
black stripes. Yeah, we're we'll bringing a tiny bit of actual true black. What should I do? A special black or the regular black? Special black seems to just be a tiny bit lighter. Maybe a little bit cooler. I never quite understood the difference, but I guess I'll go with the special black so it's not too dark. How's that? How is that? I think it's good. I love this rainbow colors right here. It looks so nice. Okay. Now, this is bugging me. I've got a little bit of... I guess it's... Leftover eraser shavings or something from the back of here. I don't like it. I don't want it. I want it to be nice and clean. Let's clean this up a little bit. Next is my colored pencils, which are right over here. I guess I'll just put them on top of my markers. What do I need? Hmm. I think an orange color. This? Eh, no, it's too brown. It's a little more vibrant than that. Not there yet. Of course, it would be the bottom layer. Let's see what we've got. Maybe this one. Pale vermilion. Okay. Try this. Oh, yeah, that's good. Let's add a little bit more detail to the head. Add more of these little indentations like or like an orange rind. And I'm gonna add some hair. So it's got these little cute little hairs on all around its head. Start 
start right around here. Oh, this pencil is already nice and sharp. I have to sharpen it to get these nice fine hairs. Doesn't seem to cover the entire body, though there are just a little bit sticking out on top of the, the eyes. Seems to come in right around here and then come back out. And it goes around the whole head. Even out on the sides, like a little beard. Little sideburns, they look like. Oh, little chunk came off. Oh, might be too light. It's like an exact match. The underlying color. I just add a few in, but maybe I should just get white. Or maybe I should actually get a darker color. I'll just leave it out since I used it. For a darker, aha, uh -huh. and this one. This looks pretty good to me. But I wonder if I should sharpen it. I don't want my long pencil sharpener though. Do I have a short pencil sharpener in here? No, I don't. Well, I'll just try. I'll just try to do this without sharpening it. So right here, the hairs seem darker. It might just be because of the lighting, but. the top of the head it's not nearly as dark I'll just add a few orange stuff up here. Where else do I need the help of a colored pencil? So in reality, these eyes are have a sort of matte sheen to them. But for the chibi aspect, I wanted to use a white gel pen to get a much harder shine. Make it more cute looking. So, I think I'll just use a white colored pencil and a little bit soft shine here. 
and on other parts it should have a little bit extra Shine on the legs, help them stand out even more. <laughs> really liking this. I think I always feel that way about those chibi animals, but it's always fun when you enjoy what you're creating. The highlights even on these dark parts. are so big I think maybe it's actually for the best if I just use colored pencils for the highlight because if I use well, I guess I could use white ink or even white gouache yeah, I'll just go ahead and use colored pencil You can also get that nice smooth highlight. Heck, maybe I can put some gouache on top of this. Can't use the gel ink on top of colored pencil because it clogs up the nibs, but if I use gouache, it won't clog up a brush. I just clean the brush. blender to blend this a little bit. Soften it up a little bit. Soften and smooth.
get oh should I use ink or gouache? I'm gonna use ink. Get my white ink out. tiny brush mix this up I think it's probably mixed well open it off to the side because usually it's a little crusty I like this deleter ink but the way the lids are it gets little crusties all over everything <laughs> it dries around the lid all right, this is the last little thing for this. And I am right on time too. I wanted to do a two hour stream in about five minutes. Hopefully this doesn't take longer than five minutes. I love white ink, it's the best. This style of highlighting is totally artistic license. This is not how their eyes reflect light at all. But that's the nice thing about being an artist. You can do whatever the heck you want. Whatever you want. Whatever you think looks good. I think this looks good. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little bit of this on my just a bit here and there on this one. Shiny and cute as heck. <laughs> Looks like it has little beans, little beans for eyes. A little bit of reflected light right here. There, its eyes are just 
unbelievably shiny. <laughs> totally not realistic at all. I'm going to switch to a different reference and see if there's anything else I should add a little shine to. Oh, it looks like the wings actually deserve a little bit. It's my cat bear. <laughs> you couldn't tell from the word meowing. Oh, he came down here. He's outside my door now. I actually think this is probably good. This is probably good enough. I'll have to put just a little bit of these wings seem to have this streak of highlight that covers even the sort of web lacy look yeah, that's probably good so that 13 on one exactly two hours after I started streaming and I feel done I just need to a little signature. Where is a nice pen? Size three. That's kind of small. Size five. Where shall I sign it? Up in its legs, perhaps. One of the last pieces I'm doing in 2018. I'm gonna have to get used to signing 2019. Pretty soon. Alrighty. There's a chibi Japanese hornet. This might be the first time I've drawn a chibi insect of any kind. But I'm pretty happy with it. I think it turned out good. I really like adding the white ink on top of everything else. It's just the, the perfect final touch. So that's it for this week. I will be back for my.